Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today, we're taking a look at the beautiful add-on known as Pure Sky. Pure Sky is made available by the folks at 3D Vision and this is for those who would want to get some amazing skyline and also for those who are looking for something that is very realistic and something that they can easily control. And right now, they've just released the version 3.1 and that is why we are taking a look at it. And of course, if you want to get this, link is going to be in the description, so do well to check that out. So, with Blender Simply Open, this is not like your regular add-on so if you download this this doesn't come like every regular add-on that you have as you need to go over to your file go over to append and then you need to jump over to where you have this so let's actually bring this one all the way up here so if you download the professional version or the pro version it comes with a simplified optimized and also liked so if we go over to the optimized version you would need to append the world file so how to do that is by simply double clicking on the blend file then you need to go over to collections and you need to select the pure sky 3.1 optimized or whatever version that you've downloaded click on append and that is going to automatically append now for us to start seeing some cool stuff we need to switch over to ev and let's go in there and put a simple plane so let's kill this all the way up and get rid of these two as we no longer need that so i'm also going to select this and drag this all the way up to this point and with this here let's press zero on the keyboard to jump over to the camera press n on your keyboard as well and tie the camera to the view so if you press the home key you can get a full screen and press n one more time to get rid of that so once you have this going you might be wondering how now can you see what's going on how you can see this is by going over to the world section click right here and select the pure sky 3.1 and depending on the version that you have, you'll see the bracket sign with the option right there. So with this, you would now notice that we have ourselves a wonderful sky happening here. Everything that you need in terms of control happens from here. So contrary to some other tools that we've taken a look at, you cannot achieve things like cloud. So for you to be able to achieve cloud, you need to go down here to where you have the volume section and you need to crank this all the way up. Now you would also notice that this isn't visible within your viewport and that is because we're working with EV and we need to go over so let's turn on all of these bells and whistles because we want them we need to go over to the volumetrics and we need to set this to a good number so for the end number i'm just going to set this to about a thousand so we can get that and you can see how much clouds that we have now if we go back to where we have our world properties we can start dialing things up and down for example if i click down here and i would like to play with the lens or maybe i would like to play with the density i can start dialing this density all the way down and i can also push this all the way up and you might be wondering what about playing with the sun and also some other properties that deals with the sky and this is very simple because all of these things are properly organized so first off there is an animation point where you can play with this so just in case you want to play with the animation this is very very nice and you can also play with the time of day so i can click on this and we can change the time of day and of course you can start seeing that lens flare that very nice lens flare that you would always want to see when the sun is hitting the camera and for those who like to play with the sun radiance you can also use this and play with that meanwhile if you would also like to play with the sun angle you can also play with the sun angle and start getting some very nice lovely and you know pretty cool stuff and you would also notice that because we have a cloud this sun is traveling behind the cloud you can play with the cloud wind force and you can also play with the wind direction we can have that direction right there and you can play with the wind force and for those who would like to get some thunderstorm and maybe you want to have some default sky you can also play with this and you can also see what we have now going all the way up there are certain things that you might want to see and play with so you know how the time of day goes from normal point and goes all the way down into the night that is exactly some Thing that is also very possible with an add-on like this so let's say you want to create a morning and the night scene you can also dial this all the way to 180 and that would jump over to this point so once that goes down to that point there is a cycle that automatically happens you would notice that we now have the moon coming out so in terms of creating something that is very realistic and something that you know aligns with what you see on a regular day this is very very cool now for those that will be wondering how about the density you know about the clouds and maybe you're wondering about stars that's no problem because there is a star section here there is that for the moon there is that for the planets rainbows and all that stuff so if we go over to the clouds and we click down here you can also choose to play with some more features that exist with the cloud in terms of scale you can also dial this up and down so in case you want to play with that and in terms of lens you can also choose to play with this as well 
And for those who like to get some metrics, you want to get some cloud altitude metric, you can also get some cool features like that. Now, it also makes sense that if you want to reduce the number of coverage that you have, you can reduce that and you can also choose to increase this. And this is for those who wants to get something that is not too crazy. You want to get some cloud here and there. You don't want to have so much. You can also play with that feature as well. Now, speaking about features that you can play with, we've already talked about the fact that you have the animation section, which contributes to how much the sun travels during the day and how the sun reveals the moon once it goes down in the night and all that cool stuff. Now, you might also need things like rainbow in your scene. So if you want to achieve that rainbow effect, you could actually position your camera where you want it to be, go over to the rainbow section. For those who want to get some opacity on their rainbow, you can crank this all the way up and you can also bring this one right down there and if you would like to play with the fading you can also choose to fade this if you want this to be very visible during daylight you can crank this all the way up and you can see how visible this is so in terms of playing with your rainbow you have a very good option and you have a lot of features that contributes to the rainbow that you can work with and this goes for every other thing once the moon comes out in the night you can play with it so let's take a look at bringing out the moon in the night so we've already looked at that that once we dial this at 180 we get that feature and of course you can crank this all the way down so that you can get the sun going all the way you know to the floor and you can go over to where you have the moon and you can bring out the moon as much as you want so if you take a look here you would notice that we have the moon and we can choose to have a full halo moon and you can see that and we can choose to increase the halo of the moon and make that full so let's get that there and we can also choose to change the scale so right here we can change the color of the moon and if we want to increase the halo or want to make it fuller or smaller we can also do that right here so by cranking this up we can make the halo bigger and you would also notice that we have the scale which we dial down and we can also dial this one all the way up to something like so so this way you have all of that control in terms of things that you would like to play with you can change the scale of the moon if this is what you want and for those who would like to you know bring the moon down or you would like to play with the intensity of the moon or maybe you would like to also position the moon in several parts you can choose to slide this either to the left and maybe you can also choose to slide this over to the right so this is more like uh, some of the things that you can do with this and the best part about a tool like this is everything is happening right here so it's not whether it's compatible with one version of blender or another version of blender everything that you're doing is directly within your viewport and you have this as a file that you can work with in terms of stars you can also play with the stars as we can increase the intensity of the stars like right now you can notice that we have a lot of stars going on right there and you can also bring this one down so depending on what you want and how much you want to increase and play with this stuff you can do this so this gives you a lot of room for those that look for ways to play with this nice planet body that we have here all you need to do is go over to the planet and you can choose to fade the scale or get it more visible you can also choose to reduce or increase the scale of the planet and let's do that and dial this one right down over to a point like so and go all the way down and we can start making some very cool decisions with this stuff and for those looking for atmospheric fog you can also dial this all the way up and you can also choose to play with the experimental fog so this is a very lovely tool that you can have within your arsenal of tools that you want to keep and the things that you can do with this is just a whole lot so imagine trying to create an amazing scenario where you'd need some clouds passing by and you need to have that realistic shot a tool like this is definitely going to get you up to speed with the things that you would want something else which is pretty cool about this tool is that it's also supported for both cycles and ev so for example if you bring in a model like this model is from the folks at transportation you can also see how cool it is and you can use this directly here so let's go ahead and play with the time of day and you can see how cool this looks and if you would also like to play with some other tools as well so let's take a look at the folks at botanic and let's add one model right there and position this one right over to a point like so let's get this one right there and we can actually make more so let's also click right here and select from truckload of stuff that you have select this other one click on ok to bring that right in and position this one right over to a point like this you can actually start making some very nice and lovely stuff by just simply playing with this tool and also playing with a couple of assets that you have 
directly in your scene. So this is uh, something that is very nice as all of the features right there are keyframeable and all of these things are things that you can easily tweak back and forth directly in Blender regardless of what version that you're working with. As this is supported for Blender 2.81 all the way to 2.91. So for those who like to get this, link is gonna be in the description where you can take a look at it. And if you also go over to the creators page, you would notice that they also have a couple of tools and stuff that you can get. So things in terms of low poly terrain editor, there's also the fast dynamic paint. They just have a whole lot of things right here and you can take a look at these things and see which of them work best for you. So this is more like it. I would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section. There's a lot of documentation about this stuff. And if you want to see more of these things, you can also go over to the link in the description and take a look at this stuff and get good with them. Tell me what you guys think about this. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.